Alright, we're going to take a look at this set here. Um, I've muted it because the uh, commentator is going to talk, and I don't want to, uh, everything to get confused. Uh, let's get into it, I guess. Let me make sure I got my pause on. Alright, so uh, FD uh, is fine. Um, there's, there's no stage that you really want or don't want against uh, Shotos. Um, they don't do particularly better on triplats, but neither do you. It's kind of split even because they do have a couple sharking tools and you have camping tools. So it really is what type of game it it's what type of game you want to play against a Shoto. Uh, picking FD game one is telling telling them you want to play like a more straightforward game where you know they they get to space you out more with projectiles, but uh, they you, you don't have to worry about getting to them when you want to. And uh, that's kind of the thing about this matchup is it's very very linear. You you either just you know spin constantly on them and you don't let them get close to your shield and you don't let them hit you, or you you don't spin enough and or you don't spin well enough and they get on top of your shield and they'll get hits on you because once they hit you once you know they they've got that long ass hit stun on all of their moves so you're gonna get hit for this long combo. And, you know, you can die incredibly early to Shoryuken, so you just gotta make sure that you are not, um, in that range, uh, for as long as possible. Um, the only ways they really kill you without the Shoryuken is either you make a big mistake, and you get into a position where they hit you with, like, a back air, uh, or, some, or something like that, while, while they're trying to recover, or, more likely, you'll get hit with a, uh, a Tatsu, uh, the, 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 their spinny thing. And uh, that can kill you at a, you know, I don't know, 100 or something, 110 maybe, I don't know, it, it, it hits really hard, so, anyway, um, as we're starting here, you've got a damage lead, so you should be running away. It's like step one to, to this matchup is just, when you're in the lead, you don't engage, ever. I mean, you're doing good so far. I mean, his, you're stuffing his approaches out. Uh, that F smash was totally unnecessary. You don't need to try to predict them and stuff. And you're also, like... You don't need to stick close to the edge, even. Um, you're, like, trying to play this like you would, like, other characters. Where, like, oh, they're at the ledge, so I'm gonna edge guard and stuff. It's kind of pointless. Um... They, their defensive options are so good, like, they, they can space you out with uh, the Hadoken, which, you know, everyone doesn't take Hadoken seriously because it's, like, so small and pity, pithy, but, like, if they hit you with it, they they have, like, a bunch of mix-ups on it, you know, it's just it's just petty damage that you don't need to take, um, because it is such a weak projectile, you can just avoid it forever, basically. Um... <clears throat> The other thing is that, you know, they have focus. Focus is, um, basically a reason to never charge anything, uh, uh, on stage, ever. Even when they're disadvantaged and you think that you've got them or something, they can just charge and tank it. Um, they can charge and avoid it, uh, and, and they can punish you for that afterwards, because they can do specials out of the charge. It's just, like, th there's no, there's no reason to be this close to the character, especially when you have such a huge lead. You should be camping right now. <clears throat> And see this right here? They He hits you off the stage, you go to ledge. Now, he's gonna spam moves, uh, because he's got no lag, so you, you kinda just have to make the right, the right guess off ledge to get back to neutral, right? And he doesn't hit you for, for this. Uh, he should have, but, you know, you do this big jump forward, and you don't cross up when you hit the shield. So he should have a big combo for you, but some, for some miraculous reason, he doesn't expect that it's not gonna cross up so he doesn't have the right move out of shield to hit you with. So, you already should have, like, a get-out-of-jail-free card here to just, you know, spin away, or, like, VSJ and go backwards or something, just establish some ground for yourself. But instead, you get scared, oh, it does cross up, and you move forward. And 
now he's gonna get to hit you because you're trying to take his space. He he's he the, all that space behind him that's his space. He gets to you know retreat as much as he wants because you're the one in uh uh frame disadvantage. He you have you have to come with a big jump. Uh, that's frame disadvantage. He's sitting on the ground. You have to come with a move to hit his shield. You're still in frame disadvantage. He's on the ground. So you shouldn't have kept moving forward here. You should have just, you know, spun away. But he doesn't get any big combo off it. He just Tatsus. Now we get to talk about how to get out of Ryu Ken combos. So there's no found science to this. But... It, because it's really, like, I don't know what the fuck Ken does. I, I can't tell you what that move that he just did was. Uh, I don't play the character. I don't give a shit about playing the character. It's not necessary to understanding what you need to do. You got out of uh, this uh, this weird leg uppercut move. Uh, it's got two hits, and you didn't get hit by the second hit, so he couldn't follow up on it. Um, you just have to be prepared, because you air dodge here. You just have to be prepared for like, oh, I didn't get hit by that, and you have to get away. Air dodging in, instead, you get pressured on shield, and because you get pressured on shield, he's going to get to hit you again, and then you dodge the, the shore you, which is great, because that would have absolutely fucking killed you. Um, a, lot, a lot of times it really is just SDI down and in, or SDI up and out. Uh, Shoryu, for instance, you SDI down and in. A lot of the combos, you SDI down and in. Tatsu, you have to try to SDI out and up. But doing good so far, even with those defensive options, just, you know, don't do that. Okay. Ken, Ken Ryu, their, their, their aerials look really stubby. They aren't. And not only are they not that stubby, uh, they've got incredible priority, and they'll beat, like, a ton of things. Even if you hit him with that F-Smash, it still probably would have at least traded, and you both would have died, probably. Um, y like, you just, you can't, you can't charge smashes on ground, ever. He's got focus. Like, he, he that wasn't even the best thing he could have done there to, to get the kill. And he still got away with it, because, you know... They, they can just run at you and fair, 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 because it's got this downward angle that's pointed towards where you are on the ground, it, and it's got this huge aerial priority hitbox, it's going to win. You can't trade like that. You're in the lead, you should you should just be running away. Running away, charging, spin, waiting for him to make a move, and the objective when you're charging that spin isn't to hit him while he's coming forward towards you. The objective is to avoid him. The objective is to vo avoid him for as long as possible. And, and make it as difficult for him as you can uh, for him to know when you're going to want to hit him, when you're going to come with, with a hitbox to hit him with. And you just keep doing that, and you keep dodging until you see an opening. But if you're going to, you know, sit on sit in center stage and just charge an F-Smash, you know, it's going to be a really easy game for him. Okay. Yeah, nothing better to do here. Nice. Awesome. You didn't let the Hadouken stop you from getting the two-frame. You might have noticed you just beat Tatsu there with um, Spin Dash. Uh, that's because you were close and he, you hit him with the iframes. Typically, Spin Dash will not tr uh, beat Tatsu. That's like the only spacing where it will. Typically... Spin Dash will go under Tatsu, and you'll both dodge each other, which is still good for you. You still want that, like, all the time. Um, but if you, uh, <clears throat> if you aerial charge it and try to, you know, um, hit him from the air with aerial priority or whatever, you'll still lose to Tatsu. So that that's why it's better to just go under it and dodge him uh, when he uses Tatsu. Uh, because the reason he's using Tatsu there is because he doesn't have anything else that will as reliably challenge the Spin Dash. So, you know... Basically, when, when you're dodging the Tatsu, you're telling him, like, hey, this is your best option for this position, and we're still in neutral. Like, nothing's changed. So, you can't just do that, or else I'll stay in the lead. So, I want to go back a little bit. Um, first, I want to see why you got hit off stage here. You hit him with the Tatsu, 
and then you're running around, you do a fair on shield. So yeah, he just punishes you for doing a fair on shield. You shouldn't be pushing forward. Again, just I'm, I'm going to reiterate that constantly, you know. You need to get into your mind that, you know, he comes to you. Especially when he's in the lead, like when he's, when, I mean, when you're in the lead. When he's in the lead, he's going to, you know, try to space you out with his Hadouken, and he'll force you to approach and stuff, and it'll be a different game. And that's why when you have the lead, you need to use it to your to the best of your abilities. And that means not, you know, running forward and faring his shield and getting free punish thrown off stage like that. Because now you're 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 taking a lot of damage. Um He gets the uh Hadoken on you and then you fair shield again. And uh not only do you fair shield we'll go back one more time here. You fair shield, you're in disadvantage. He hits your shield, he doesn't try to go for a shield breaker, which is great. He goes for Tatsu instead, it goes through you. So now you're back in neutral, right? You're at a point now where you can take space and take advantage, but you still want to hit. And unfortunately, this game is really dumb. Uh, Shotos don't have lag on their moves, so you try to hit him, and you just hit shield. And he gets to move around before you even get there. So... Um, it would have been better in that scenario to just go backward a little bit, you know, keep, remain, maintain center stage, charge a spin, you know, find, find the timing uh, of what he's going to do after he tattoos. What does he do after he tattoos? He moves forward towards you to, he does, he literally does two foxtrots. That's, you know, that's, if you can keep an eye out for that, if he does, keeps doing that, that's something that you can take advantage of, but you have to give him that space first. You have to, you have to scare him by saying, Hey, you're dedicated to the lag on this move. I'm, I'm threatening you, and and you mo can move around a little bit and threaten him like, oh, I'm gonna go hit you, and then you can see what he's gonna do after the tatsu. His he does his two fox trots or whatever other conditional move he does, and now you're saying, okay, so now I'm waiting for the two fox trots, and now I'm gonna hit you, and then you can get your fares because you're conditioning movement. But from 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 here, you're just trading with shields, and then <laughs> you're getting annihilated. Holy shit! Okay, so what happens here? Yet again, frame disadvantage. You de Oh, whoops. That's fine. So you get into frame disadvantage. You dedicate to homing attack because you get scared because he's shadowing your landing. In these scenarios, don't do homing attack. Don't do that. Homing attack isn't going to work. Uh, they have, you know... It's it's Shotos. They get so much off of parries, they're constantly doing them. They they are quick to their shield button. Uh, homing it. This is where homing attack is really bad in this matchup. Is when they understand how to punish it. Because uh, that's all they have to do is they have to understand. You know, oh, this is where I don't press the button. Now now they're they're gonna come in for you. What you do in this scenario instead is you either spring and you try to fight your way back down. That's option one. Uh, option two is you spin, uh, and you a hop press. So you do your the one frame press so that you go, uh, you you kill momentum on the spin. They think you're gonna go way further. You go way shorter. They over they usually overextend how far they need to go to punish it. And if they don't, if they know where it is, you've still got a hitbox. And if you a, do the a press, you've got a rising hitbox, uh, and it can uh, help you get away from them. Uh, the third thing you can do is you can just land with a nair. Uh, because what they're doing is they're they're threatening to uh, to land on you. So if you land on them with the nair, you do some shield pressure. You might be able to get away depending on what they use out of shield. And if you can, though it did look very challenging in that scenario, it didn't look like it was something you could do. You can try to go to ledge. You might have been able to do it with a spring, spring to ledge. That might have been an option. But what you don't do is you don't homing attack, and you know because now you're going to get punished for it. And there's not even anything you can do about this. Uh, you 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 might have. Like what? What were you at? Yeah, you you were dead. You you couldn't have even SDI'd out of the out of the shore. You, or I mean, I, yeah, sure you can. So that's just you know you got punished for for making that mistake. And I mean, you should be way further ahead in this game than you are because you uh you haven't been um camping your leads and you know uh making him approach at all. And you go charging F smash again. If he if he let you hit them with the fo with the focus attack there instead of running away for whatever reason, 
he probably would have gotten a punish on you. And now he's getting this big combo on you. Let's see why. A. Um, don't two-frame when you know you're not going to catch the two-frame. You know you don't have enough time there to catch the two-frame. Don't try for it. But B. You didn't even get the angle down on the F-Smash. I found recently that the reason I will miss angle downs on F-Smashes sometimes is because I'm trying to angle my controller, uh, my control stick, my thumbstick, uh, the way that Sonic angles the F-Smash. I'm trying to angle it the same angle. What you should be doing is you should hold the F-Smash forward so that until you know you're charging it, so a regular F-Smash, and then before you release it, as you're still charging it, you just hold the thumbstick down instead of at that at the same angle that, like, what is it, like a 70 degree angle or whatever? Uh, you shouldn't be do doing it the way, the, the, the same direction that Sonic is angling up Smash. You should just be going totally, totally down, uh, 180 degrees, uh, as soon as you know that you're charging the F-Smash. So that's why you might sometimes miss, uh, the F-Smashes, but also, don't go for an F-Smash when you know you're not gonna hit it. You knew you weren't gonna, you knew you didn't have the time to hit that F-Smash. You, uh, and that's gonna put you in disadvantage when he's on the ledge. And, and that's another thing that, you know, sucks about Sonic, uh, is that, Almost every other character has better ledge game, ledge ledge defending. Um, but you know you still have like the, a big advantage to your ledge game, which is you can choose whether or not to play the game. You can sit close to the ledge if you need to, and in this scenario, you know it might feel like a necessity. But I feel like you don't have any conditional options off this ledge right now. You don't know what he's gonna do unless you had been keeping track, in which case please inform me. But uh, he's only gone to ledge a few times. Um, he's uh, what, what's he done? He's done Hadoken off ledge, and he's done you know jumps off ledge. But uh, I'm pretty sure you know uh, the the reason you get caught here is because you got put in lag by the F smash. So next time you see the opportunity for them to go to ledge, don't think about how to capitalize on them grabbing the ledge. Think about how to capitalize on them uh, getting off of the ledge. So that's the thing, is that, you know, you are you just jump that one step ahead. You skip this step that you know that you're going to miss out on. You skip to the next step uh, of, of the, the flowchart where, like, oh, this is where I might have some opportunity to hit them. Maybe, you know, I do a jump back here on, on a read on their thing. Maybe I just wait and see what they do, and, and I use that for next time. Or maybe I wait and I see what they do, and I just let them keep extending, and I keep retreating stage until I'm at center stage, and now I have center stage control, and they're in a bad position. You know, there, there's a lot of things that you can do if you uh, if you don't give up your frame advantage at the exact wrong moment. And you even, you know, you even almost got the jump back air read because you knew that that you, you you had the idea for it and it would have hit, but because you were in lag, you had to give up more space uh, for it than you wanted to, and you weren't able to to land the hit. If 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 you hadn't been in lag, you might have been able to land the hit for the back air, and you know that that would have been maybe a kill. Even he's at 92. You if you got the sweet spot, it might have killed. So, instead you get hit, and uh, you try to air dodge out. And, um, with Shotos, they, one of the things that they're always going to keep track of when trying to condition you, is they're going to keep an eye on what you use to get out of their combos when you can. Um, you feel like you have to air dodge out of this combo to, to get out of it. And let me take a look at it one more time, just to make sure I'm not lying to you here. So he comes up, hits you with the Nair. Yeah, see, you didn't need to air dodge out of it. He gave up on the combo because he's watching you spam buttons. So don't spam your buttons out because he's just going to con find that option conditionable and he's going to, you know, catch you slipping. So if you can get out of the move, you'll know that you can get out. You use SDI to, your, to the best of your abilities. And, um, something that I'll do to get out of disadvantage, and this works especially well against Shotos, is I'll, uh, dash walk cancel. Uh, because, um, if I'm, if I'm SDIing out and I see that I'm getting close to the ground, if I can dash walk cancel as soon as I land, I'm, like, super out of that combo. I mean, you jet out of combos. You have all this stage in, in between the two of you now. It's something you have to kind of practice a little bit and get familiar with, but it's definitely doable. If I can do it, you can do it. So, um, there's that to think of, but otherwise, you know, don't just, you know, directional air dodge. Uh, you can, uh, spam jump out of things, uh, 
you can spam neutral air dodge, which, you know, is at least less laggy. And you can spam your fast aerial, which would be up air. And you're not gonna, you know, you're, if, if you do get the up air, you're not going to, uh, you're still gonna have to make a move after that to get yourself out of the combo, because, you know, it's up air one. But at least it gives you an opportunity, and you're not going to be tanking double combos like this. So, because now you're going to tank a second combo, and and yeah, spring is also an option. Um, but you know, air, 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 directional air dodging is an option, but it should. I'm just saying you shouldn't spam it. You know, if you if it, it's still a mix up. And then okay, well he's trying to give you an opportunity here, but. Yet again, you're spamming moves out of his combos, and you die for it. Um, you, you did the thing that I do as well, where you where you, when they are on Halo, you'd start the stock with a spin shot. Um, just stop doing that. Just you know, cancel the spin dash regularly. Uh, there's no wait reason for them to ever want to approach your spin dash, even when they have the iframes. They don't want to come in because a, um, a lot of people. Not necessarily everyone, but a lot of people will not have a great sense of when their iframes stop. There's not a visual indicator, so it's really a sense of mental timing. And, um, they just, they, they, they don't want to, uh, you know, throw a hitbox, miss, because you have iframes on the spin dash or anything. So they're not going to run up to you, you, typically, and just, you know, try to challenge your spin dash. If you just stay there charging spin dash, or you just cancel your spin dash, or whatever else, you know, usually it works out fine. But... If that doesn't work, if, if you know, they're, they're charging you when, uh, when they're off Halo with iframes and you're just sitting there in spin dash, that still is not a reason to do the spin shot. It's really, really bad because it just gives them an excuse to throw an aerial at you as soon as they get off the Halo and you'll die a lot for that. So just run. Just run away. I mean, that's your Sonic, right? That's what you do. So, you know, charge a spin, cancel it, air dodge down, uh... And then run to the opposite end of the stage. Or, you know, pretend you're going to run and then uh, short hop air dodge backwards. Just land really fast. Uh, mix up stuff, you know. Don't the, This spin shot across the stage thing is super long developing. You wouldn't do it, you know, when your opponent was just, you know, in neutral against you. So why would you do it when they've got iframes too? It's not good. And that's going to get you hit. I actually need to roll it back one more time just to see uh, how you tried to get out of it. Because you landed, and then you rolled. Yeah, see, he just is letting go of the combo. He's just saying, oh, I won't take this combo here, and it's mixing you up and putting you in worse frame disadvantage. So, in those scenarios, I mean, so, like, the, the things that he wants are the directional air dodges and the rolls, because, you know, he can catch up to you when you do those. He he can he can you know just fox trot forward and he's caught up to a roll. So don't uh, don't do those things. You know just um you run away, spring. You know things that you know give you greater control over your distance. If he's gonna let go of a combo, just you know run away. But it can be hard because on your controller your hands are you know you're trying to SDI out of combos and then he's letting go of them. Uh, in those scenarios, you might find that, you know, he lets go of a combo, and because you're not spamming air dodger roll, uh, you find yourself not doing anything when he lets go of the combo, and then he can just restart it if he wants. Uh, that's, those are the times when you kind of get forced to shield. Um, because you see, oh, he dropped the combo while I was trying to SDI, and now I, uh, am not prepared to just run away because I haven't been holding my control stick because I was SDIing. So you might find that, you know, when you want to run away, you miss that, that frame opportunity, then you have to shield. And then when you're shielding, you know, uh, Shodos have a shield breaker combo that they can always use on you. So that's a, a mix up kind of moment is, are they going to use the shield breaker? Or are they not going to? But even if they don't, you really don't want to hold shield for a whole Shoto combo. Cause even without the shield breaker thing, they will just keep hitting your shield until it pokes. Typically what I do is I wait for, uh, one, two, three, or one, two, three, four, and then I roll away, and they, uh, are not prepared for that, because for whatever reason, between three and four, and or between four and five, depending on the combo, uh, they kind of have to dedicate to the next move, 
and it's not as simple as just dropping it and pushing forward and watching you. So I wait one, two, three, or one, two, three, four, uh, depending depending on the shield damage how I feel, and then I'll do my roll option. And then you know you roll in, you roll out, the and that that's the way that you get away from Shoto combos is that you know that that the roll is the mix up that you can use when uh, they aren't hit when you're not in hit stun. Uh, when you're in hit stun, you're kind of more at their mercy. But when you're not in hit stun, you know, and you're, they're hitting your shield, it's a different game uh, where they 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 have to know when you're going to decide to get out of uh, the shield pressure. And rolling is really good against it. Uh, it feels like it isn't. It is. Um, it is when it's when when they're hitting shield. It's good. I I know it's complicated. It's like so stupid, dumb. Like the hit stun on the character is insane. They kill you super early, but you know. It's still a good matchup for Sonic because you never have to be you never have to put yourself in those positions. Like they they have to actively like guess correctly on what you're going to do. And I mean they don't have to just like sort of guess correctly where you know it's a fifty fifty or a trade or something. They have to absolutely guess correctly on uh, what you're gonna do out of a spin, and then they have to find you on the ground like right in front of you. And you, your job basically is just to not let them do that. So you don't let them hit you with fair or nair, where you know. So you, you don't challenge, you know, those, those trajectories where they're in the air with those things. Um, you don't let them hit you with fucking focus, and you don't stay up close to them. Maybe you get hit by a couple uh, hadokens, uh, the the projectile. Um, and may, maybe you know. Sometimes they hit you on your shield and you can't, you know, avoid it. You maybe you tank a combo, yeah. But if you just spin across the stage, spin across the stage, charge spin, VSJ, spin across the stage, you know, constantly, just constantly spinning and stuff, they have very few options that they can actually come get you. They they have to actively really, really, really outplay you to uh to to just to to get to those moments where they hit you. And and that's why it feels, you know, it's it's such a, you know, all or nothing uh, matchup because either, you know, you avoid them for like seven minutes and you win the game by timeout or, you know, maybe you get the, those kill moments because the, the, the clock has forced them to make moves and then you get those punishes or you, you, you mess up and you let them get close and they kill you in like a minute and a half. It's just, it sucks. That, that can make it a very mentally straining game. Let's uh, get to the next one here. And I'm assuming I will see much of the same stuff. Kalos, good pick, lets you camp like forever. Uh, pro probably, uh, you know, as far as far as uh, stage selections go, a lot of times it can be a choice between do I pick Town and City or do I pick Kalos against this character. Sometimes you know your opponent knows Sonic's uh, stages really well and they'll ban one or the other and you'll still get the uh, the remainder. But sometimes you get to pick between Town and Kalos. And most matchups you want Town over Kalos, uh, but this is one of those matchups where we want Kalos instead. Um. It, it just it feels comfortable, you know, to have the um, uh, the straight down ledge where you know you have an opportunity to wall jump. Uh, that's great. Um, it's also bad for the Shoto because they can't uh, you know float under stage as much, so you have a little bit more linearity in stage gimping them if uh, with spring if you can get to that. Um, but it's also just the platforms. Uh, the, these platforms, you know, they're too high for a Hadouken to hit you, so he can spam it, and you can kind of just avoid it for free unless he jumps, and then, you know, but that's an easier game. Uh, on uh, Town and City, the the middle plat is um, a little bit easier for him to hit you with him, and it feels like the plats actually uh, make things a little bit easier for Shotos to camp when they want to, uh, which sometimes they do, so... But that's all I gotta say about the stages. Let's uh let's get into it. Um, I'm gonna go back real quick to see how y'all started this with damage already. Oh, because you homing attacked. Okay. Yeah. So too aggressive. Uh, too aggressive. You're already behind. Um. 
I don't know why you spam homing attack like this. It's, uh, it really is, like, that move that just is gonna get you fucked, uh, for, like, nothing all the time. Um, it, it's great when you can get, you know, your, your confirmed combo off of it, but a lot of times, you know, you throw the homing attack and it just whiffs because you're throwing it in neutral. If, if you save the homing attack for, you know, those times when, like, oh, I got, I, I got them to, uh, land without attack. They, they, they have to, you know, roll, get up, attack, whatever. Um, you can get a confirm on the homing attack because none of the moves that they can use on a platform when they uh, miss their tech uh, will get them out of the range of the homing attack. So you just have to, it's just a matter of timing for you. Or, you know, out of a, out of a spin dash uh, where, where you know you're not going to have the, the space to confirm fair. You know, homing attack's a great option. You know, there, there, there's times for homing attack, but it's never in neutral. It's There's never a moment where it's, like, neutral. Like, the only time... When you see, like, Ken or, like, Wrath get these, like, 40 to 60% combos off of one homing attack at the very start of a game, it's not because they started the game and just homing attacked. It's because the game started, their opponent got scared immediately because they're playing fucking Wrath, and they try to use a move, and Wrath immediately punished them by doing a reverse homing attack, up air one, grab, up air, up throw, and there. And or some or something uh, similar to that, you know, the the Ken combo is a little is a little bit uh, different. But my my point is that they're they're not getting the homing attack because they just threw it out. They're getting the homing attack because they're seeing that their opponent is whiffing a move in neutral, and they're fast enough to react to it because you know they they've got the proper spacing and it's muscle memory and a million other things. But opening the game with homing attacks is bad, and you shouldn't do it in neutral. It's it's a, it's a whiff tool. So, so now you're kind of in the mood to charge with spins. And, and see, this was actually perfect right here. It was just, you know, here you are spinning across the stage. He wants to hit you, so he's coming. He's trying to, you know, zone up on you. See how, like, he's just using these empty nares? But, you get shield pressure. Let me see. So, see, yeah, he's spamming empty nair. And you shouldn't get hit by those. Because you just charge spin, and you don't release it. If you just charge the spin there instead of trading with the, the neutral air by letting the spin go, you're trying to time it so that, like, you, you, you catch him as he's landing or whatever, you shouldn't be trying to time it. You, should be, you, you shouldn't be worried too much about hitting him, I guess is what I'm saying. Because what you're doing when you're trying to time it is you're like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit him uh, before the Nair hits me or something like that. And, and you're saying that you, you're, you're going to win off, based off of your, your, your read or your, your cadence. But what you should be doing is you should be charging spin, waiting for him to not be, to not have a hitbox out, and reacting. I, w I want you to see with your eyes, hey, it's safe to release this spin. And if you hit him, that's awesome. But if you don't, you've extended to the other side of the stage. And you have a lead. And, you know, like, there, there, there there's no reason to try to trade with Shotos when you can always just spin safely. Because if he's spamming... A neutral air that's not going to hit you unless you purposely run into it, then don't run into it, and you're going to be on the other side of the stage. And that's what you, where you want to be is. You want to be on the other side of the stage, making him constantly run after you. A lot of it is a stamina game. A lot of it is telling these guys, hey, you are going to have to chase me across the stage, you know, 25 times before we have an interaction. That's the way it's going to be if I want it that way. So you got to do that more. Instead, uh, you try to parry, I think. You get hit by a down, down tilt. And, uh, you come back to stage okay, so that's fine. But you still get scared, and you use homing attack again. You gotta stop, uh, getting intimidated. When, when you get intimidated by that yet again, uh, I think the best option is the, um, the spin hop, uh, one frame thing that you do without a jump. You get the A press before you land, and, uh, you, you get to kill the momentum on the spin. I, we need, like, an official name for that. I'm calling it spin hop, but there's also the SGK spin hop, which is a totally different thing. Uh, good job on uh, trading with the, or uh, beating the Tatsu. You're doing okay so far, but you know nothing's. Oh, we got a combo. Where are you going? Okay, uh, don't do that actually. Um, something I had to learn the hard way. Uh, you chase him off stage, and you try to do the reverse up B into back air. Uh, don't do that because he's going to Tatsu and the Tatsu is going to beat your back air. It, you're actually lucky that he went too high because if he went the right uh, distance, you're only 51 so it wouldn't have killed you, but uh, it would have been uh, really good damage and really good positioning for him. So 
don't try to challenge that. Uh, it, unless you have, like, a very specific read on the spacing, and you know exactly where he's going to be, and you know you can outspace the Tatsu because you hit him really far away or something, like, this is too low percent. Like, if you were at, like, 90 and he was going to Tatsu back high, then maybe. But because you might you might hit him far away enough that once he actually reached you with the Tatsu, you, you were above him. And that's the thing, is that Tatsu doesn't hit where, you know, uh, Ryu Ken's head is. It doesn't, it doesn't hit, like, it really does only hit on, like, the leg part. So if you're able to get just a little bit higher than them, you can do it. You can back air them. But, uh, you never want to do it if you don't know if you can get above them like that. Because, uh, the Tatsu will kill you at, like, 70 from there. So, like, you need to be careful. So, here we are back in neutral. Focus. Alright, good. Yeah, just spinning and extending the stage and waiting for them. And now he's just gonna start spamming Hadouken. You honestly should've just stayed there if, and let him spam Hadouken, because the more he spams Hadouken, they don't hit you or anything, you're just avoiding them in camping, the angrier he's gonna get. So you, you really should've just maintained stage there instead of trying to force a movement. Don't, don't, don't let him make you nervous with his camping moves. Because this happens. He forced you to move. And now, now you're trading with spins. And you just whiff a grab. It kind of sucks that, you know, you whiff a grab and you just die. But that is the game, so. I mean, it's that's the thing. It's risk-reward. You whiff the grab and you died. Look what happens when you caught the grab. Because then you come back up and you catch the grab. And look what you get for it. He's in disadvantage for a bit. But he even hits you out of his disadvantage. Because, because you accidentally did a wall jump. Like... Grab, grab is so unsafe, dude. So stupid unsafe. And that sucks, but that's the way it is. You just got, you just have to like, it's not, the grab, the grab isn't part of your game plan. Your game plan is, you know, what you were doing earlier. Spit across the stage constantly, force the Ken to get frustrated and try to zone you, and beat him when he's trying to zone you, and keep leads. And that's, that's what you need to be doing, and you know, you need to not, you know, get close to him. You know, the, the moment where you were at, like, oh, let's try for a grab, you were giving him an excuse, like, that. that's, you know, that's optimistic. You're, you're giving an optimistic perspective to your outlook. You're saying, oh, if I get a grab, it would be really good for me here, so I'm going to go for the grab. When in reality, what you should be thinking is, if I miss the grab, I die. Because it's Ken. And you're, you know, above 70%. If he hits you once, he's going to shore you can you, and you're going to die. You know? That's the thing. It you're allowed to make those moves again in this matchup until you're at like maybe fifty percent, and then when you're at fifty, you need to start worrying about getting sure you can. Because if he jabs you at fifty and he gets a jab one, jab two, uh, I don't know what his fucking moves are, the big upper one or the whatever. You know what I'm saying? If he combos you, uh, starting at fifty. You're gonna be at like 65 or 70 when he does the Shoryuken. And then you're gonna die. Uh, th there's, you know, a chance that you can SDI it. You know, you SDI in and down. And you might be able to get through, um, the startup frames or the start, the startup hitboxes and not get hit by the final hitbox. And then you might be in a good position and stuff. But it's not worth the risk for a grab. It's just not. You start the game off. You get your grab. He Hadoukens, then he Tatsus, and Tatsu beats you. And because he got the Tatsu off on you, he gets to hit you with two more moves. You could have been more patient at the ledge as well, and not let him nair you for free. But you do get reverse back air. Home, reverse homing attack back air. So, that's good. Still, I mean, you're in a really bad position right here. I mean... Comes down, you do your spin shot thing again, so he knows exactly where you're going to be. And now you're both at center stage, and he's got you right where he wants you. That's the thing, is that if you do something linear and something pattern-based, uh, a lot of people who play against Sonic, all they do is they try to detect patterns. They just try to see, is there a time when the Sonic is going to do something very specific, and where is it going to lead them? And so, 
because you're doing something, you know, at a given time, you know, formulaic, he's going to detect that, and he's going to find opportunities to turn that into his best advantage state. And his best advantage state is right here. Oh, you're right in front, he's right in front of you, you know, you're right next to each other. That's what he wants. And so he gets a bunch of damage for it. And there he is again, dropping combos and letting you make mistakes. Yep. You just can't let him hit you with the, on your shield like that. You might have been able to roll away from that hit if you knew that was the hit he was going for. But, you know, it's hard It's hard to just read those as a mix-up. And that's not something you can punish that for you. And now he's just chewing the fat because he knows that he's got you dead to rights here. Um, yeah, don't homing attack his shield. Uh, you, you basically, like, as soon as you hit his shield, you want to get as far away as possible. And that's part of the formula for this matchup is, you know, you you spin across the stage and you hit his shield, you get away from him as soon as possible. And you force him to, you know, not depend on out-of-shield options. But if you if you give him the opportunity, you know, that was reactable. So there's no reason he wouldn't. You're racking up some good damage here. A back air might have might have hit there. What are you gonna do? Uh, almost a good read. Uh, his roll was just a little too far. Like you really you really had him on the on the ropes there, but because you didn't get the kill, now you have to go back to playing defensively. And I like that too. That you know when you see him doing the focus, you you. You play the best defensive option of him, like, you know, going forward with the focus and whiffing, and then you F-smash him. Like, that's just safe. It's just a safe call-out. Like, he'll, and so he'll, he'll never do it, but that is that is conditional tar conditionable target as well. Is that because he'll never do it? That was good. That was good. The shield push on the F-smash prevented him from getting the next hit. Be because he'll, he'll never do it, you can condition off of it. And punish later if you really want to. Remember that focus... Uh, so, some people don't know this, I guess so I'll, I'll uh, clarify. Um, focus is only a ta tanky for one hit. Um, it's It doesn't have a damage amount. If you hit him twice while he's in focus, he'll get hit out of focus. So spin charge, for instance. If you spin charge into focus, as long as you spin charge into it before the hitbox comes out, which it is very slow you'll beat focus. The, the, the reason it's a mix-up there is because he can determine the timing for when he wants to come out of focus. So he can end it whenever he wants, and, and he can come out of it with a hitbox, so it can be very scary to challenge. But because you're doing something that's a conditionable target, you're saying, hey, every time you focus, I'm going to march back, and I'm going to charge an F-smash, predict that you're going to use the focus forward, you're going to whiff, and then I F-smash you, and I get a kill. So because he sees that, that's a pattern, he recognizes the pattern, he always plays according to it, he plays defensively as well, and we go back, you go back to neutral. He is playing defensively. He's saying, I'm going to go back with the focus and land with it and let it go. That's something that you can punish. Once you've, once you've established with him that that's what you're going to do, and so he's constantly doing that as a reaction to you, you can spin charge into the focus instead. You can run back, pretend you're going to F-smash, wait maybe just half, half a second, and then just spin charge the fuck into him, and you'll get a hit off of it. Uh, that's just conditioning. So I'm going to go back here a little bit. Uh, you're in a bad position in this game. Uh, and you, you, you have been, you know, you, you have killed a lot of time. So it's, you know, it's not a terrible game if you can just, you know, clean up these parts where you're letting him hit you and play a little bit more to a formula. You know, less homing attacks, less, you know, aggressive moves like that. Um... Less optimism. Um, and just spin. This character just loses the spin. Once you get him into these snowball situations, finishing would be good. But, you know, it's not necessary. I have a problem finishing on those big combos as well. You know, I spin them for, you know, 80% start of a stock, and then... They, they, you know, I've got this 80% lead. I don't look for, you know, the kill option. Yeah, I mean, you kind of, you kind of had to go for it.
But you're in the lead now. You don't have to do anything. Okay. <sighs> this is the thing. You're not watching here. You're not watching this percent. You need to be watching the percent. As Even that 3% lead, there's a minute 40 left in the clock. If you have that 3% lead, you're gonna, and, and you go to the opposite side of the stage, he's gonna throw a couple Hadoukens, he's gonna get frustrated when they all miss, and then you can, you know, whiff punish one of the Hadoukens if he keeps going for him with a homing attack, or if he can, if he instead decides to start running at you with Tatsus, Nairs, and Fares, you just run back a little bit, spin, and you're going to rack up more damage. That is a formula for success in this matchup. And now you're playing the clock, you're playing your game. You're playing Sonic's game. Instead, you run at him uh, optimistically again, and you try to hit him with something that totally would kill him, except it's a single hit, and he's in focus. And then you die for it, because he can use moves out of it. You even didn't need to get hit by that. You could have springed as soon as you hit the focus. But you were surprised. That's the thing, is like, you get close every single game. And this happens every time I, I criticize replays from you. I see you get close every game, even though you're doing a lot of things that I totally wouldn't do. Because you do have, you know, this more aggressive play style as Sonic that, that I don't, I, I, I personally, like, I can't see myself playing. You, you make it work. But because of your optimism, because of that, you know, outlook on that play style, you end up, you know, getting killed by shit that you don't need to get killed by. Alright, back to Kalos, I think that's fine. You know that you made mistakes, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't staged. Though you didn't really play the stage as much as you could have. But immediately here... Why are you this close to him? Why why have you chosen to start the game by getting this close? That's where you don't want to be. That's where he wants you to be. Yeah, again, just whiff grab. Here you just, you know... You get away on this part here, safe from that whiff, that's great. You land, and you try to start spins again, and he just hits you with Nariel. You gotta remember, he's gonna push forward with the aerials, you can't challenge those. Spins don't challenge those moves. You you charge the spin, you wait for him to land. Uh, your job really, in those scenarios, is to make sure that wherever you are on the ground while you're charging the spin, is not where he will land with the aerial. You don't want to be that close to him, so you want there to be some space. So either you wait, and you you uh, instead of charging the spin, you wait, you dash back, you spin forward, or... You just, you know, charge the spin, cancel it, and then go backward, charge spin, go forward. You know, all of this is just about not being where he's going to land, not being where he is on the ground. Instead, you tank a bunch, just, you know, him checking your shield and getting the right timing mix-ups. Don't do homing attack. You're playing a much faster game here. I feel like you're doing this because you tried to play a slower game last time and it failed. But it didn't fail because you were playing a slower game. So I feel like you're going to get beaten harder this game because you're trying to do something that you shouldn't. Like, you don't really want to play a faster game against this character. And see, because when you play a faster game, when you play a faster paced game... You kind of necessitate yourself to do specific things. Um, to play fast, you have to go specific places, specific times, you know. You could, you know, mix tempos. Where, you know, you play fast sometimes, and then like, for instance, right here. Let's go back a little bit. You got hit off stage here. Now you're coming back. You feel like you have to play fast, so you go forward with uh, an uh, affair off the stage. What if instead of doing that, you'd mixed up the tempo... And, you know, he thinks you're going to do that. You stay on on stage right here. You just stay on ledge, hang for a bit. He doesn't have anything that's going to challenge you with iframes, obviously. So you just, you know, wait, see what he's going to do. And then you just use Kalos to your advantage. You spring air dodge down onto the platform. And now you're kind of safer. 
because there's very few things that he can really hit you with from there, and you have more space to charge a spin and go back into that high tempo play that you want to. You can mix those tempos instead of just playing the one tempo all the time. Instead, you did something more linear, more expected, and he punished you for it. You have to mix up. Don't charge homing attack. I mean, this guy is, this guy could be playing better. You only got 14% for, for a whiff punish on 74 frame end lag. So even though, um, whoa, it didn't pause. Okay. Even though you're behind, you can tell that his playstyle right now is um, kind of campier. He's he's letting you spin, and he's just kind of giving you the entire stage because that gives him more time to react. So, you know, he's saying, I'm in no rush. But here's the thing. That, that makes you feel like you have to let go of the spins, and you have to find ways to hit him, right? Because you are behind, and you do have to catch up, so you have to force those opportunities. You have to approach. However, there are five and a half minutes on the clock, and that's plenty of time to, you know, gap one stock. It's, it's a one stock lead. He's at 60 or at 25. Now, if you keep rushing him down and like this, you might find the kill. Uh, it's going to take you a bit, probably. He's going to keep running away, and it's going to come, become more of a, a linear matchup for a bit. And yeah, you'll find the kill at maybe, you know, 80 or 90 or 140, or maybe it takes until 200 because this game sucks. Um, and all that time that you're going to spend, you know, linearly approaching him and forcing these mo moments, you're going to rack up some percent too. That when he does come down from Halo for his first, uh, after his first stock, you're going to be at at least 50, if not higher, somewhere close to 80 or 90. And that's going to really be bad. And that's if you can take this stock before he kills you again and outright makes this game basically impossible. My suggestion is, instead of constantly linearly approaching him like that, make this a game in itself. Uh, he's going to run away, so don't, yet again, uh, we talked about this before, don't try to approach him all in one chunk. Sure, approach him, but make it campy still. You want to approach him by canceling your spin. And then maybe he tries to take some stage back and you take some stage back. And then maybe, you know, you start charging spin again. He Hadoukens. You dodge the Hadouken with a cancel. And then, you know, you take a little bit more ground and he has to take a little bit less ground. You know, he has to move back again because now you're charging spin again. And he wants to give as much stage as he can. And now maybe you you intimidate him into using a Nair and coming forward. Now he's come forward. You get to do something. You get to punish that with that with that whiffed aerial with a spin, or maybe he doesn't. He keeps trying to hang back, and you continue closing in, and he's not scared of you closing in. So as you continue gaining ground, he continues just spamming hadokens and then spamming down tilts, and then you know maybe you homing attack him then because if he's spamming down tilt, it's a free homing attack, or maybe you try to fair him or something. You know those slow approaches, you're going to take less damage. If you do, if you play them right, if you if you are a truly better player than this guy, you can beat him in neutral by doing this because you're saying, hey, you want to do this linear thing? I'm going to approach you in chunks. I'm going to shield your shit. I'm going to come forward, and eventually I will find a way to beat you. But by doing this one big like oh spin across the stage and that's how this is going to go, you're you're playing into his game plan. You're giving yourself less options. Um, all because you're, what, like, afraid of the clock? Like, the, the Ken, the Ryu Ken's not gonna camp you for five and a half minutes. They don't have the brain cells to know how. So instead, you feel ne it necessary to just keep going forward. He's gonna keep, you know, beating, beating your spins with aerials and Hadoukens. See? You take it all in one chunk. And I mean, yeah, you can keep playing this fast pace and going across the stage like this, but, you know... We'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. See, charge spin, slow approach. Okay, see, that's better. You might get a... Yeah, he's stupid. 
so you got you got actually like a a good little thing because you did the slow approach for at least like even just one exchange you you kind of just called him out for trying to do that that um that linear game plan where you know oh I'm gonna keep my lead and you managed to make this closer and then you messed up really bad. I mean, he's been doing it the whole game. You should have caught on already that, you know, when he hits you, he's going to wait for you to air dodge out and make a mistake. And I've already covered this stuff, so I'm just going to reiterate very quickly. Uh, don't directional air dodge out of his combos when you're getting hit by them. Don't roll out of his combos when you're getting hit by them. Look for spring out. Look for, you know, I, I mentioned the dash walk cancel, you know, SDI, run away, you know. If he's going to give you those moments where he's going to let go of combos like that, you can just run away. Hey, really good, really good. Holy crap, let me see that again. So, he did that. And this is what I was saying before, is that you managed to make these games, like, really close all the time. Even even though you messed up really bad really early here, and, you know, you've had some bad-looking deaths, you, you take the risks that give you these, you know, big payoffs. And I mean, that was pretty linear. He just taught you three times, and you just, you know, lined it up so that you knew where to hit him uh, when he threw the Tatsu. So that's good. But then, yet again, you know, you, you don't play to the game plan. We got four minutes left and one stock, so I mean, it really isn't going to be like a camped game here. And, and, and this even kind of sucks, because he, he sees you spinning, and he just runs all the way to the end of the stage. You kind of had no choice here except to to go off stage. So uh yeah, okay. As long as you get away after it, I don't care if you do stuff like that. But then you whiff homing attack again. Spring out, okay. I don't see you reverse the homing attack like that a lot. Uh it's not a bad mix up, it's just uh you really shouldn't homing attack. Homing attack as a recovery, I do like that. And then, you just tanked the whole thing and he just didn't break the shield. He could have killed you there. <laughs> Alright, striker. And then, I mean, that's not how I expected that to end, but... Uh, it's coming. Um, play slower. Don't homing attack. Um, uh, camp your leads. You never camp your leads, ever. Every time you have a lead, you still just go in head first. And sometimes those, you know, going in head first, those moments, they, they give you so, this aggressive nature that lends you uh, a little bit more of an intimidation factor. I just think that you should, like, keep in mind the percent lead and stuff and, and, you know, play a little bit better towards that. And still, and if you still keep that aggressive nature and stuff, even when, when you've got that lead, you know, you'll find opportunities. But you've got to let them happen first. You've got to let things develop. I mean, you sit in neutral for five seconds and you're ready to push forward again. I want to see you, you know, spin canceling and, and just dodging shit and, and shielding and parrying and spinning across the stage defensively, you know, to just avoid for like 30 seconds, a minute, you know, kill some clock. Let these games go to time once in a while. If your opponent is just going to put push forward and push buttons, you shouldn't let that be a winning strategy against you just because you're playing Sonic. Um... Ken, Ryu, specific stuff, you know. You did really good against Hadouken. That never ended up being a problem, but he was playing Ken. So, you know, watch out if you're ever playing a Ryu. They have different Hadoukens that go at different timings. Um, that can, It can be a little bit more of a campier matchup because they might use that more to their advantage. Um, otherwise, uh, Ken specifically, don't uh, roll or air dodge out of hit stun. Only only roll uh, when, you're, when they're hitting your shield. 
and you know, and, and and you'll get a feeling for that when it's good to do and when it's bad to do. But it it is kind of a thing that you have to feel, unless you know Ryu can specifically, so you know what their their hit combos are. In which case, you can figure that science out on your own. Um, but you don't want to air dodge out of out of the hit stun because they're just gonna drop it and then they're gonna you know punish your air dodge. Directional air dodges are laggy, so that's not something you want to use to get out of disadvantage ever. Basically, if you find yourself directional air dodging, um. Out of out of out of you know um, disadvantage. Uh, that's usually a habit that you need to fix. There's there's very specific moments when you can very consciously do that. You know, as a landing mix up and stuff. But doing it to get out of someone carrying you in a combo, that's a panic option, and you're gonna get punished for it. Uh, instead, specifically to Ryu Ken, typically you want to find ways to get out of the their their hit stun. With just raw SDI movement and maybe a spring. Uh, remember, you know, when you're in disadvantage, disadvantageous states like that, you can go to ledge and you can just, you know, use your iframes to your advantage, come back to neutral slowly, you know, just don't get frustrated and caught up in the moment and let yourself, you know, twitch because that's when you're going to get punished the most. Mix up your tempos, you know, you don't always have to play fast one game and always play slow one game you can mix those tempos up a little bit but i did see you do that a little bit in that third game that was actually really good that was cool um i know that you know how to do these things you just have to keep in mind in, uh, as to doing them when you're playing so uh i don't have too many other thoughts here so i guess i'll just wrap it up with that